Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first day of Genetic Genealogy Ireland. Uh, my name is uh, Morris Leeson. I'm one of the many volunteers with the International Society of Genetic Genealogy, which is free to join. Uh, you're all very, very welcome here. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Family Tree DNA, uh, for sponsoring this uh, two-day lecture series. And we have 12 DNA lectures set up for you that will teach you about every aspect of genetic genealogy. Uh, so you're all very welcome, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Andy Hochreiter. Now, Andy uh, has, uh, is a genetic genealogist and lecturer who manages multiple DNA surname projects and has successfully applied DNA to trace several related family branches of his own family tree overseas. He instructs continuing education courses in basic and advanced genetic genealogy at two community colleges in uh, Maryland and helped facilitate the genetic genealogy module of the online genealogical research course at Boston University. So to tell us about DNA for beginners and how DNA can be used as a, a wonderful additional tool for your genealogical research, please give a warm welcome to Andy Hochreiter. Thank you. I don't know, is anybody else hot in here? I'm feeling it, you know, standing up here. <laughs> the heat's on. But I want to welcome you all to the um, to Back to Our Past conference here. And I want to thank uh, Morris Gleason for inviting me to speak. Uh, he may have second thoughts after today, but uh, we'll uh, <laughs> do the best. So I want to talk about, um, uh, about DNA, and especially for beginners. So we're going to talk about some basics. And before I start, I have a confession to make. I have no Irish um, ancestry. So uh, you can tell by my name, Hochreiter, that's not at all Irish. It, it actually is German. But on my mother's side, I do have some English and Scottish. So uh, I'm, I'm fortunate also in that my mother had um, two marriages. Her first marriage, uh, she was Canadian, and it was to a uh, Thomas Edgar Wilson. So I was able to track them back to uh, Northern Ireland, and I have had just a wonderful, uh, both a fascinating and frustrating time doing Irish genealogy. And, I, you know, the lack of records always kind of promotes the use of DNA so that you can find relatives where the records are lacking you know, the DNA may put you on to uh, the right path. So, you know, the thing about genealogy, depending on how long you've been doing it, it's always, there's been a, a traditional path, and that is using your uh, records uh, and uh, documentation, prony and such, um, talking to your um, older uh family members, relatives who have stories about where they came from or who, who was who, and that. So to add the, uh, that, that uh, comprises a uh, part of the toolkit uh, for us as genealogists. So what's happened? Well, DNA has happened. It's gotten more and more sophisticated so that we can use that as a part of our uh, a DNA toolkit, and it's the application of a DNA test, the genetics, to finding relatives and genetic relationships. So I I'll tell you a little bit about my uh, personal projects. Um, I was able, using uh, uh, the Bishop's Archives in Germany, to trace my paternal ancestors back to about 1650 using documentation. And uh, after that, uh, I did visit the village my grandparents came from. And I met relatives, but they all came down through a sister of, a grand, of my grandfather, and therefore there were no Hochreiters. There were Hanauers and Prems and other 
um, uh, family names, but no Hoke Raiders left in this village. And even though I'm meeting the relatives, I'm uh, still very kind of kind of disheartened that I could not find a Hoke Rider, somebody with that name, in the village. So they they've been missing, you know, for a while from my uh, uh, you know from my matches and such. So I started a, D- a Y-DNA serve project for the Hoke Raiders at Family Tree DNA. And I tested my relatives, and yes, we were all related. And uh, uh, there was no question there. But as I tested more people in the United States and across Europe, I tested Hoke Raiders in Hungary, Slovakia, um, Austria, Germany, none of them were related. They were completely different haplogroups. And so there was no uh, common origin. I found out that we all uh, originated uh, along different lines. So I did not find, I still, using DNA, did not find any uh, Hochreiter relatives up to a point. And I'll get back to my story of woe and frustration and uh, and um, finally enlightenment uh, towards the end of this briefing. So the popularity of DNA has been promoted by a lot of things, television shows, you know, back to your past. The scientific uh, discoveries keep coming and uh, you can't pick up the newspapers without seeing something, you know, new happening in the the field of genetics. and uh, uh, it's affected us in many ways, you know, because people are concerned about privacy, they're concerned about ethics, and uh, the law starts to change, you know, to protect your privacy and that. So some of that is very good. But what really drove the popularity was the uh, was the new... Uh, direct-to-consumer kits that were available for people to buy and and to do, you know, take a swab or spit in a tube at home and send it in. So uh, how about a show of hands, how many people in this audience have DNA tested? I think that's about 100%. I know you say, <laughs> maybe I should ask who hasn't tested. So <laughs> you're in the beginner class? Okay. I, I know there's a lot of questions always about, uh, okay, I got my DNA test, now what? Well, what's the next step? And I'll tell you right now, if you keep coming to these lectures over the next two days, there are other speakers here who will talk about the different types of uh, DNA and the techniques that you use to find relatives and how to take that next step. But today I am just going to talk about uh, DNA for beginners and set kind of a foundation for all of us. Well, did you know that you have two family trees? You have your genealogical family tree. And this is all your ancestors that you, whether you can identify them or not, but if there were a name in this chart uh, for every little box, those are all your ancestors who contributed to you coming into existence today. Well, the other type of family tree is the genetic family tree. And these are the ancestors that you got your DNA from, that who passed DNA. And not all of them, not all your ancestors were able to pass DNA because some of it is limited and it, it becomes, uh, it just disappears. So uh, in, in the chart, the gray areas might represent your um, genetic ancestors or family tree. And it, uh, the genetic tree is a subset of your genealogical tree. And you can have two siblings who have exactly, of course, the same genealogical tree, but they do not have the same genetic tree. They got a different set of DNA from your parents than you did. 
and there will be uh, differences between you and even a sibling, a close sibling. So some, as I mentioned earlier, some ancestors tend to drop off, and it may be different between two siblings, what DNA they inherited and what they didn't. Now just, I don't want to bore everybody with high school biology, but I just find this amazing, you know. Um, I, I think my old slides used to say around 50 trillion cells, and they've gotten more precise. This type of thing, I tell you, if you're a government employee and you're one of those people counting all those individual cells in the human body, I call that job security. That's, uh, <laughs> can you imagine, uh, you know, doing that type of thing? The wonder of it all is that we are so similar. And I have, uh, you see different estimates. Some are 99.5% similar. Some are 99.9% similar. I, am, I prefer the higher number because it, uh, it, it, it emphasizes the similarity between people. You can look around this room right now and any differences in uh, eye color, hair color, ethnicity, and all of that is based on that one tenth of one percent of difference in our DNA. Okay, so DNA actually exists in a couple places in our, uh, in our cells. And it uh, exists in the nucleus and then it exists outside the nucleus. So this is a picture of the breakfast I had this morning, the eggs I ate. And uh, that's basically what a, uh, what a cell looks like. You've got the middle part, which would be the, compared to a yolk, and that's the nucleus. And then you have this area that might be the white of the egg on the outside. That's the cytoplasm. Within the cytoplasm, you have these uh, mitochondria, and they're small energy-producing organelles that uh, contain its own set of uh, DNA. But most of the D our DNA is in the nucleus. That's th where the chromosomes are located. Something here. Okay. So uh, if we're looking at the chromosomes, you know, they're in the uh, nucleus of the cell. And if you pull one out and you start to unravel it, you start seeing the uh, double helix. Uh, and the double helix, of course, is made up of rungs, like on a ladder. And those are actually um, pairs of your uh, base pairs that uh, are recognized by uh, the letters A, uh, T, G, and C. And you always have uh, the A's uh, pairing with the T's and the G's pairing with the C's. And if you remember back to, uh, we, we had a little memory jog, and that is straight lines with straight lines and curves with curves. So that's how the base pairs uh, line up in your uh, chromosomes. And that's what they're counting when they're looking at what you, uh, what your DNA is. So um, I mentioned that there's different types of DNA. So it, within the nucleus, you have, men have the Y chromosome. And uh, also there's the other, um, the other chromosomes that you have, which are called autosomes. So those are, those are the 22 other uh, chromosomes that you have uh, besides the sex-determining uh, chromosomes. So besides the Y, which a man has, you have um, a man would have one Y and one X chromosome. Uh, females would have two uh, X chromosomes. And I mentioned those little energy-producing uh, units outside in, outside the nucleus the mitochondrial, they have a very small structure uh, of base pairs, but that's unique 
uh, type of DNA, and I'll talk about inheritance patterns for all of these also. Now, I'd be remiss not to say that there's some uh, things that you should consider before you take a test. And uh, that's what, that's those surprises you're always reading about in the newspaper. You know, basically, you got to be prepared for a surprise. And DNA testing can reveal many things, family secrets, um, somebody's adopted, somebody's illegitimate, your brother's not your brother, or your father's not your father, and such. Unexpected relationships. You get a, uh, an email from somebody who said, I'm adopted, but I think we're half-brothers or something like that. Um, un unexpected uh, ethnic makeup. I mean, that's for a lot of people. Oh, I, you know, I'm 100% Irish. And then you find out you've got some Turkish or Asian or African in there. So... Uh, Always be prepared for the different uh, surprises that can come out. And certain companies will provide medical information to you uh, based on your test. Um, the other thing is you, you've got to be concerned about um, exposing your personal information. I mean, people are concerned about privacy. All the companies, all the legitimate companies certainly take steps to try to protect you um, just as well. But how, how many of us use credit cards or we're on Facebook and they're selling information about our buying habits and such. And lastly is, you know, your DNA is not just your DNA. You share some of that DNA with your siblings, with your cousins, with your parents. And once your DNA is out there, some of that information can inform on other people also. Okay, so um, what happens when you want to take a DNA test? Um, since all of you have, you've probably already encountered these documents. The first one they present to you is called the Terms of Service. And that is not a voluntary form. That is uh, you must sign that or they won't test you. It's set telling you what uh, it's presented to you at the time of purchase. You've got to sign it for them to even develop your DNA. And it sets out their conditions on what, how they're going to use. Now, they all admit that the DNA is yours, but people worry that it's going to be sold or something to a, a pharmaceutical company. Well, in this case, all the companies say, okay, we will use your DNA uh, to develop better tools for comparison with shared matches and such. Uh, it's the second document that is voluntary that uh, uh, if you want to participate in some kind of medical research or such, that's the form that you release your DNA for. And normally, it's not something to worry about because even if you sign that and you're participating and they sell it to a pharmaceutical, it's not your individual DNA. They aggregate it. I say, I was going to say aggravate it, but it just the uh, way. They aggregate it and it goes in combined with others. So they're looking at age um, parameters and such to develop better drugs. And it has been proven that based on drugs that are developed based on DNA testing are better, they work better, and, and such. So some of this concern is um, uh, overdeveloped, and um, I wouldn't worry about it. But those are the documents you get when you... Um, you want to test. Um, okay, so the, one of the things I tell people is, you know, there's a lot of companies out there and they ask me, what's the best? Well, I tell them there's not a best company. It's always based on what your priorities are, what your objectives are, and that's how you choose, a, you know, a company. Now, right out here, uh, today is, uh, in fact, this uh, conference is hosted by uh, Family Tree DNA, and uh, that tends to be for a, a company 
that is for more serious people. I think you get better responses from uh, your shared matches. They also offer, in addition to your autosomal test, uh, the uh, comprehensive Y uh, DNA testing and mitochondrial testing. So um, that's not offered at the other companies. All the companies offer what's called autosomal, and I'll explain that in, in the coming slides. So another one that's out there is 23andMe. They started with an emphasis on uh, medical testing, providing your uh, medical uh, uh, carrier status on certain genes and certain uh, uh, SNPs or, or mutations. And um, you actually can go there and only take a test for ancestry, your ancestry, so you learn about your, uh, your ethnicity and such. Or you can combine that and get the ancestry test plus the medical information and you, you pay a little bit more. Okay, Ancestry. Ancestry is known for their huge database. I mean, there's somewhere between 15 and 20 million uh, kids in their database. So th this is for people who want to maintain uh, a family tree, make connections, and figure out how the common ancestors with your matches. And you might have better hits. But I, you know, I tell people that it's, it's a US company. So all, you know, not all, but a, a big majority of people are US. And if you don't have colonial roots in uh, the U.S., uh, like me, my, my uh, grandparents were all pretty uh, recent arrivals in the United States. I don't get that many. I'm looking for uh, comparisons and shared matches in Europe. And uh, uh, so some of the other companies might offer you uh, better, uh, better matching in those terms. Family Tree, as I said earlier, they're here. They're building their tremendous uh, database of Irish results. And uh, I don't see Martin in the audience, but uh, there are people who, here who run that and with uh, Morris. And uh, it, it's helping a lot, a lot of us, not just here in Ireland, but those US uh, Irish ancestors, uh, people who have Irish ancestry. Okay, another one is MyHeritage, and they're kind of a, I want to say a newcomer, but they're like Ancestry. Ancestry also, besides their DNA, they offer um, uh, digital documents that you can look at, census records and birth records and such. Uh, MyHeritage started out the same way. It's actually a uh, company and it's based in Israel. And the founder started it to help the Jewish people who had European ancestry. So they tend to have a bigger uh, European um, group in their database. Um, and they, they're actually giving uh, ancestry a good run for their money because they came out with some excellent tools to analyze your DNA. And it's up the game for all of them. So, uh, you know, these are all... Uh, uh, legitimate companies that have good tools. Now, a, uh, a British company is Living DNA, and they're the new kid on the block, but their, um, their ancestry is based on the study that was done of the people of the British Isles. And what impressed me was the fact that they actually get it down to maybe county level that some of your DNA has originated out of. And like I mentioned earlier, my, my father's side was um, German, but my mother's side, she, uh, her father came out of Bristol, and the, the, they were Bryce's, and uh, they're all based in Somerset and that. So uh, for me, it was interesting to get that side of my family uh, uh, DNA. And uh, uh, I'll mention more about ethnicity and how uh, underdeveloped it is still. OK, so what do you get when you take a test? And you all probably all know that. You get your raw data. And what is that? That's all those positions 
on your chromosomes and the values. So you can see up here that there's those uh, base pairs, T's and G's and C's. It's all the specifics that you have, and it's in your uh, raw data file, so you can download that and actually look at it. But you know, it's not easy. It's a lot. It's alphabet soup, and uh, that's what you use the company to help sort out and uh, make uh, sense of. The other thing is that um, you get either your ethnicity, which comes from your autosomal results, or you get deep ancestry, which comes from Y DNA or uh, mitochondrial DNA. Um, and that that is, you know, where where do your ancestors come from? It's a good guess on where you know they come to uh, from. And but the most important thing you get are your is a match list, your relatives, and how much DNA you have with them. That's where the gold is. That's what you want to work and figure out what the relationships are with these matches. And uh, where is that common ancestor that passed down DNA to you in, in that match? And uh, so you get a match list, something like this, that tells you uh, uh, how many matches you have at that company. OK, so now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the different types of DNA. And um, the Y DNA, as I said, is inherited by the man, uh, by a man. And it's strictly along the um, male uh, ancestry. It goes back along one line. And uh, it uh, traces back to an original um, founder. And uh, it's passed down generation after generation from father to son. OK, so um, the uh, Chromosome, uh, the Y chromosome has a lot of base pairs. So they, they can select which ones have some variation and then compare it to other males and see how close you are related to them. And um, it, it's, it can only be used to trace the male line. Uh, so if you're a female, you can still participate by having your father a male brother or a paternal male cousin test to get your uh, uh, you know to get your Y DNA. Now uh, the unique thing about Y is that it's it's a standalone chromosome. It doesn't recombine with anything else, so it lasts a long time. It can get passed down many years with very minor mutations, and you do see some mutations in it. Now. Um, and, and that goes, uh, that works very well if you have a surname project, because that Y chromosome is coming down al along with that surname uh, in a traditional um, uh, surname when, when you're passing from father to son, the surname as well as the Y DNA. Okay, so when we're looking at Y, there's actually two types of tests that you can take. One is called a STIR test, and another is called a SNP test. Now, the STIR, um, that, that is short for short tandem repeat. And a SNP is a single nucleotide polymorphism, which is actually just a fancy term for a mutation. So think of SNPs as mutations. OK, so here's a Y DNA. And, uh, you'll see that uh, this pattern, this reputation, uh, repetition of the pattern GATA is repeated there. There are certain sections of the Y -D uh, DNA chromosome that has um, repetitions going on of those base pairs. So in this case, this repetition is repeated three times. So it has a... Uh, a value of three. We say that stir value at that location is three. Okay. Now stirs are used to predict your uh, haplotype, those other people that you are related to, and it, uh, it, it usually represents a more recent evolution. Um, those stirs might 
uh, differ, even between a father and a son, something uh, rather than a uh, stir value there of three, the son had an additional one, so he has a value of four. That can happen, but the more closely you're related, they say it's, uh, it's a genetic distance. And if you have a genetic distance, no, no differences, a, a genetic distance of zero, that means you're very tightly related. Now, the other um, type of marker or DNA that they, test that they have is called the SNP. And a SNP only happens at one location on the uh, chromosome. And that is a change that happens. And so you can see here that uh, the, uh, you have a C and a G in the top uh, row. And a, that morphs or mutates to a T and an A. And those represent branching of your Y chromosome. And uh, the, uh, the SNPs represent what we call haplogroups. And I'll explain that in just a minute also. But those are ancient origins. Those are where you have this mutation, and it just represents another branch of the Y-DNA tree. It happens infrequently, but there's a lot of testing now going on that, that does show that some SNPs can be more recent. So they're, they're finding more use for this. They're finding more, uh, they're identifying newer SNPs that have happened maybe in the last couple hundred years rather than a couple thousand years or 10,000 years. Okay, so when you get your results back for the Y, this is what you're going to see. This is, um, I want to make sure I don't, mess with, ah, there, okay. So you see that that's the position where those repetitions occur. That's one position, that's another, and another. And they count up how many repetitions. So in this case, there were 13 here. There were 25 repetitions there. This is what the testing company compares to other men to see how close you are. And they may look at this and say, okay, um, uh, you know, uh, you have, you, you are this closely related to this other person based on the number of differences in this table. Now, one of the things I'll mention, this is a table with, uh, I believe, 67 markers tested. Um, you can test for 37, which would go down through, what about uh, this? That's uh, okay. And, and they have only 37 or 67 or up to 111 uh, positions. And if you take what's called the big Y, that's like the ultimate Y test, you'll actually have up to 700 stirs provided to you. Right now, the comparisons are only go up to about the uh, 111 level to, uh, to compare you to a different person. Okay, so this is, this is then what you get when they're comparing, and, and it tells you who your uh, matches are. So in this case, the names are blanked out here, but this is somebody I, whoops, I hit too many, I'm sorry. Um, this is somebody who I represent that says 67 markers. We, in 67 markers, I have no differences with this person. So actually, this is my brother. So we have no differences there. This one is probably a first cousin. We have a, a distance of one. That means that somewhere along this, uh, well, this was um, 111 marker. So somewhere along there, we have one difference. And those are very tightly packed. But you can tell how closely you're related to somebody based on these genetic distances. Okay, so um, now the other type of markers are these uh, mutations, or SNPs as we call them. And they're telling you about what ancient group you belong to, 
your males, uh, where they descended uh, from uh, on the journey out of Africa and populating the world. So every time, as I mentioned, you had a mutation occur, it divided and uh, turned into a new branch of the tree. So A divided, and then you had A and B, and then B divided, and you had A, B, and C. So that type of thing was going on through history, and um, these are determined by what they call a terminal snip. What's the last mutation that you have? Um, so he here is, uh, this looks like could be a pedigree tree, but it's a pedigree tree of the different types of haplogroups. So you go all the way back in history, and the original um, Adam or um, procreator of, our, of, of all men, you know, lived in Africa. The branches broke down over the years. And look at that, about 65,000 years ago, 45,000 years ago, 40, and some of the more recent one. I'm an E1B, so I'm up here. It's an older branch. Um, but ours are more recent, and most of Europeans are R1As or R1Bs, and uh, you might wind up there or under another type of uh, haplogroup. And they're designated using letters and such. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, each mutation then um, divides into a branch. And those branches are, are sometimes called subclades. Okay, and here's my branch, you know, and you can see how complicated that gets. They're adding letters and numbers out. Well, now they kind of take an abbreviated approach. What that um, uh, E1B, yada, 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 represents is actually my um, terminal SNP, which is E. Dash V13. E, V13 is the end of that. E is my haplogroup. Plain as mud, isn't it? <laughs> um, okay, so as I mentioned, haplogroups represent the genetic group that you descended from. And there's actually um, a paternal haplogroup that you, everybody has who's a male and a maternal haplogroup that everybody has, both males and females. The maternal haplogroup represents your, uh, your mother's side and how she, um, they descended uh, over time. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, they're represented by different uh, letters and numbers, and uh, they're defined by the mutations that broke those um, branches off. Okay, so the trouble, though, uh, you know, all the tests have their advantages and disadvantages. Okay, the Y is great for um, certain things uh, like studying surnames and such. It helps to break down some of those paternal um, questions. You know, you're, you've got a very common name like Wilson or Smith, and you want to know all right, what branch of Wilson's do I belong to? Well, there are studies out there that have uh, projects out there that have studied these things and can place you in the group that you belong to back to maybe an early ancestor and cut through a lot of that for you. Uh, one of the things that it can reveal, as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, is uh, family, uh, family secrets, and that is what they used to call NBPs um, uh, uh, or NPEs, non-paternal events. Well, that's kind of a, a mystery. What is a non-paternal event? Now they're, they're, they're using the term MPE, which is a misattributed parentage. And that is, all right, my father's not my father. It's somebody else. Okay, limitations is that... Uh, Women cannot take the test, and they have to find a qualified or a, a, a suitable uh, tester to do it for them. And many lines um, have only daughters, so we call that daughtering out. Um, but uh, you lose that Y chromosome, and you have to work your way back to an earlier 
um, ancestor and then work collateral lines coming down to find somebody that has the Y that uh, you need. Okay, mitochondrial. That's those other, uh, the other DNA in your cell. That goes back strictly along the maternal line and uh, it is passed down from the mother to all children. So both men and women have mitochondrial DNA. And though, uh, you can take that test and you can compare and compare your maternal ancestry with uh, each other. So it has an, a unique um, DNA structure. It's circular and it's made up of three sections, uh, the coding region and two hypervariable, which means fast changing um, areas. And they have different degrees of testing, but you want to take the full sequence test if you want to do anything with uh, genealogy. And it's only really, it's a very small structure. You know, compare that to the 57 or 59 million base pairs in the Y. There's only 16,569 base pairs in the mitochondrial structure. So you want to have all of them tested so that when you compare yourself to somebody else, you're looking at every one of those uh, locations. Now, fathers don't pass down any of their mitochondrial. It only comes from the mothers. And uh, it doesn't recombine. It mutates very slowly. In fact, it mutates slower than Y DNA uh, does. And therefore, it's used a lot of times uh, with this uh, to determine the ancient DNA of some of these uh, uh, skeletons that they find uh, because the, uh, it, it just, there's a lot of it and it, it hasn't mutated. Okay, the same thing with them. You, you have a, uh, a pedigree of, of the different uh, mitochondrial haplogroups or maternal haplogroups going down. I'm an H, so I'm down here, but you could be any one of those. And they evolved over centuries or uh, millennium um, from a, an, a uh, you might call it the female Eve in Africa. And uh, as the mutations occurred, it, the new branches uh, broke off from it. Uh, each other. So that's that's what I am. So when you look at your results for the mitochondrial, you'll get something like this. And they have reference uh, sequences that they compare it to. Now, this is the point where I say, okay, depend on your testing company to give you this information. You're not going to go through all those 16,000 uh, results. You're going to look at something like this that tells you uh, what the, uh, they compare you to the reference model, which was T, and I'm a C, so I have a change there. Now, sometimes you, the reference model didn't have a value. I have a C at that uh, location. And then sometimes the reference sequence uh, has a value, and I have, I have none. So this is what they, they do to everybody. And then they compare you, and they can tell you whether how close you're related to this other person. A mitochondria, because of that small number, does not have the variety uh, or the variability that they can compare people to. You might be related to uh, a match no genetic distance, a, zero, a genetic distance of zero. That means you match on all aspects. But you don't know if your common ancestor is 100 years ago or 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago. That's how slowly it changed. So it's a much harder uh, DNA test to use to, for uh, genealogical um, purposes. Okay, um, So the, the two types of reference models are the Cambridge reference sequence and what's called the reconstructed sapiens reference sequence. And uh, if you test at family tree DNA, it, it gives you both. 
Okay, so like I mentioned, there are advantages and disadvantages to mitochondrial tests. Uh, you know, basically, you're looking at uh, taking a full test, so you've got all of those. It will tell you your haplogroup. Both men and women have mitochondria, so they can, uh, they can um, both test and, and compare your results to each other. But as I mentioned, uh, the distance, uh, you won't know how far back that common ancestor is much harder to identify. OK, so the popular one now is autosomal. All the test companies give this type of test. And sometimes it's called a cousin test because it involves everybody, not just back along the male line here um, or the female line, but all those aunts and uncles and cousins in between. Okay, so this is the DNA that is uh, in the uh, 22 autosome or the 22 other um, uh, chromosomes that you have. And that, that represents a great amount of our DNA, about 95%. They don't test it all. They t uh, test uh, 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 various numbers and uh, then do the comparison. Now, characteristic-wise, you get 50% of your DNA from each parent. And it does recombine, so that can really throw off a, a lot of things, as I mentioned earlier, you you may be di very different uh, from uh, uh, your uh, your sibling, um, but this is the most popular test now. The recombination can throw it in. You want to phase your data if you can test a parent or a paternal cousin to help you identify what side that DNA comes from. So this is a, a, a uh, kind of an illustration of all these ancestors and how it mixes uh, coming down to you. Advantages are it provides the widest range of uh, connections or relationships to you. Both men and women have uh, autosomal DNA, so they, they can pair the, the results. And um, the disadvantage or the uh, issues that you have to work with is that um, it, it recombines randomly. So you have to identify whether or not a relationship is on their paternal side or maternal side. And it doesn't last forever. You get a certain amount from your ancestors, but it dissipates over a number of generations. So you go back five, six, seven generation, and there'll be ancestors that you got none of their DNA from. Okay, X is very unique because of the um, uh, inheritance pattern. It's uh, different than uh, the other, uh, it's different between males and females. They have different. So uh, males get uh, that one X from their mother, females get two, one from each parent. And um, it's not the same as the maternal or mitochondrial test. It's a completely different test. So a lot of people confuse the two, but uh, don't do that in your own mind, OK? And um, men uh, inherit their ex, and they pass it on to their daughter, but not to their sons, OK? OK, so this is the, the male pattern. And as you can see, um, he's getting the X from his mother's side. So you can look at this pattern and determine what ancestors would have passed some X DNA down to you if you're a man. Okay, And one of the help, uh, helpful things is to look at your pedigree and then identify those ancestors that uh, according to that chart, will pass the DNA to you. And now here's the female, and they're getting an X from their father and from their mother, so they got more ancestors that they can determine where that X came from. And again, use a pedigree chart to determine those. Okay, very quickly on uh, uh, ethnicity. You get your ethnicity from... Um, 
from uh, the autosomal test, but you get deep ancestry from your uh, Y and mitochondrial. They're based on what's called ancestry informative markers. These are uh, SNPs or mutations that uh, differ, have different frequencies with different um, regions of the world, so they can determine that. Now, I will say that ethnicity is nearly impossible to predict. They're getting better by revising a lot of the reference populations, but each company has, has different ways of determining your ethnicity. They use different reference populations, different matching thresholds, and different algorithms to determine that. So it's, uh, and it's constantly changing. Those who have tested at Ancestry probably have seen that, you know, all of a sudden your, your ethnicity changes uh, to a vast degree because they've improved it. Okay, so with my own, um, my own uh, research, I was able to test somebody from Buffalo, New York, found out that his ancestors um, came from Tannisburg, which is near my grandfather's village. And um, the research back into the records showed them connecting in Moosebach, uh, an ancestor in the 1700s who um, uh, moved from Moosebach to this other village. And when I went to the phone book, I found the, this Hoke writer. They spell it T-H-E-R. I spell it T-E-R. So I was not hitting that because I just did not, you know, think of the variety of ways it could be spelled. And uh, so uh, here's what uh, comparison. You can see how close we are. These are my cousins that I found who are Hoke writers, and we uh, are seventh cousins. Autosomal will not show that relationship. This was only through the Y that showed that. So I want to thank everybody for this, suffering through my, and uh, <laughs> you don't have to invite me back next year, but thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks very much, Andy. Now, before you go away, we probably have time for a few questions. So, oh, yes. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Andy? Yeah, we have a lady here. Yes. Hi. Um, we have my brother. Uh, he was on National Geographic, so they identified his ancestors. And then we have National Geographic was set up as a scientific test uh, or a scientific project. And uh, initially, Family Tree DNA was the lab that developed everything, and you could transfer it. And it depends on what kit he took. Afterwards, they brought in a different company, Helix, and those, do, those results do not transfer well into family tree DNA. If it's an older kit and it was done by family tree, you can transfer it to uh, family tree DNA, and um, you get the benefit then of matching he can look at his uh, other other people that he matches with. So if we did transfer him okay. to Y, so he's like a, a big Y. Yes. We didn't, we didn't do any maternal um, You should have gotten some results by the transfer. Um, you um, Does it show up as having certain values and you're getting ma matching because then you don't have to well, take another test. Family Finder and why, but it, it maybe, maybe it's been there on a long and I just never looked at it. Yeah. Well, if you want to stop down, I'll be at the booth downstairs and we can pull it up on my laptop and you can we can take a look at okay, it together. Sure. Cool. Anybody else? We yes. have uh, Michael here. Yeah. 23andMe uh, does a, a little bit of return and a little Y. That's correct. Um, how does that Y compare with the Y test on FTDNA? They're doing, they come up with your haplogroups for the Y and the mitochondrial based on SNP testing. It's not comprehensive like they do at Family Tree DNA. So it'll give you a, maybe even a higher level um, 
uh, haplogroup uh, in your subclade, but not the deep ancestry that you would get with a comprehensive uh, uh, test. And it's been, they'll do the STIR testing at Family Tree DNA, which gives you very definite uh, results. Whereas these are uh, the, the SNPs, the mutations. They'll they'll do a number of them, target ones that kind of predict <coughs> what haplogroup you are, in, both maternally and paternally. But, but did each one have to come down from a certain extent on, on the wide uh, haplogroup tree? Put you on yes. your leg of it. Yes, and, and so you might come down this far, but you don't have your terminal SNP, which is maybe much deeper. And it gives you more granularity when you're when you're uh, comparing to other men and that this is they'll tell you you're an E1B and uh, there's there's millions and millions of E1B people so it's it's more of a general uh, prediction of what you're is. You uh, to give an example of that. My uh, um, it, uh, uh, 23 B uh, system LB is a comparative side. This would bring me back 4,000 years to the Bronze Age, when the Sandy division of the baby environment. Um, whereas if I do my uh, FTDNA and I do a big Y test, that would give me a SNP every 100 years. So that would bring me down to the current time period. So it's a big difference. We had another question. Thank you, uh, gentleman here, yeah, in the blue. And then James, that'll be the last one. Um, it's an observation. I'd like to photograph of you with your separate cousins. I've done a similar thing, and I've got somebody who differs from me in two snips in a big Y. And I've got a couple of EHAs and a couple of I. Yes. But we have discovered, although there's no autosomal connection between the parents, if we do enough cousins out to the side, a couple of them <laughs> find together, you know, in a very. That's a good point. And, and they uh, really promote. Uh, use it in adding autosomal to your Y to give you more of that. Uh, I do a few projects, I have done a few projects, and surprisingly, the number of people at home do family binder. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah. And, and that's, uh, that, that, uh, that test is the cheapest, you know, you, they're always on sale, and it adds so much more, you know, and it gets uh, more clarity, certainly, to more recent um, relationships. And that. Thank well, you we, for we, sharing. We have to uh, call it a day there because we've got people waiting outside to go in for the next lecture, which will be Martin McDowell's uh, uh, Ballycarry DNA project. So uh, please can we show our appreciation, Randy Hochreiter. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we'll start here in about two minutes. Oh, thank you. Uh,